So we recently needed to turn down the ends of some ball screws. And if you do some research online, everybody points to fancy inserts. This one has a cubic boron nitride tip on it, and has a fancy price to go along with it. We wanted to see if one of the inserts that we already had could get the job done. Before going straight for the ball screw, we want to do some practice. This is a high-speed steel drill rod, and it's pretty tough. It's hardened to about 65 Rockwell C, and the file can't even touch it. The insert that ended up working the best was this CNMG 432 from ISCAR. We tried a few other inserts. They didn't really work that well. This was the only one that really could touch the drill rod. We'll talk about those in a little bit. But this really comes down to just as much technique as it does the particular insert that you use. Now you might think that if you're cutting really hard material, that you would want to take a very shallow depth of cut. But that doesn't really work that well, and I'll show you that in a little experiment. Here I'm taking only 10 thousandths off the diameter with each pass, so that's a 5 thousandths of an inch depth of cut. I'm using the power feed on the lathe. It's set to the lowest speed that the lathe can do, which is 2 thousandths per revolution, and I'm turning it about 50 surface feet per minute. I think it's about 400 RPMs. And I took four passes on that drill rod. I'm going to speed them up here. Between each pass, we measure the diameter in three places with mics and we wanted to quantify if we were cutting on size and whether or not there was any taper. These are the results of that test. You can see by the fourth pass there's some pretty significant taper and it gets progressively worse with each successive pass. If we look at the cutting insert under a microscope, we can start to get an idea of what's happening here. You can see that the tip of the insert has a radius. This is called the nose radius. And the last number of that CNMG 432 insert size, uh, so the 2, corresponds to the actual radius of the nose, which is 31 thousandths. Now in this illustration, let's compare what the cutting forces look like between a normal depth of cut, which is about equal to the nose radius, and a very shallow depth of cut, like what we did in our experiment. Now with a normal proper depth of cut, the cutting forces are distributed with an axial component and a radial component. But if you take a very shallow depth of cut, the cutting forces are almost exclusively in the radial direction. And this is significant because those radial cutting forces tend to deflect the part away from the cutting insert, and that doesn't do it any favors in terms of actually removing material, and it also tends to create a big taper on your finished part. So knowing that, let's repeat the experiment, but increase the depth of cut to the nose radius, or 30 thousandths. And you can see this is going great. It leaves behind a great surface finish, uh, makes a nice chip that breaks easily, and those chips are, are that straw yellow color that everybody strives for. So I'm pretty satisfied with this cut, and I, this, this goes pretty well. When we check it with mics, just like before, it cuts pretty much on size and there's no taper. This is a picture of the insert before cutting, so this is fresh out of the box, and then after cutting. And you can see there's some wear right there at the tip, but overall it's pretty much intact. We tried some other inserts. This is a cheap one from McMaster, and uh, it seemed to go kind of okay, but then the cut quality started to rapidly degrade, and the chips, if you notice, change color. They get a lot hotter, and it suggests maybe a lot more friction and, and higher cutting forces. This is what that insert looks like uh, fresh out of the box, and then I think we can see why the insert starts to degrade pretty quickly. That very sharp tip just breaks completely off, and if you keep going, this ends up happening. We tried a Sandvik insert too, and I wish I could show you what the cutting looks like, but still getting the hang of this YouTube thing. This is what it looks like fresh out of the box, and it's a similar story with that McMaster insert. After one pass, it's uh, pretty heavily wearing, and then uh, eventually the tip just totally shears off. Now, I'm not a carbide whisperer by any means, but I do think there are a couple of aspects of the design of the ISCAR insert on the right that make it better suited for this job compared to the economy insert on the left. For one thing, the actual cutting edge on the ISCAR insert isn't nearly as thin, which makes it quite a bit stronger. In addition, the economy insert doesn't have any coating, and I can't find any information about the actual carbide substrate. The deal with carbides is that they're actually made of little pellets or grains of tungsten carbide, and then they're held together with a binder. Cobalt's common, nickel is also used, and the smaller those grains are, the tougher the material is actually going to be. So a submicron is, is the toughest that you can have. And then on top of that stronger carbide substrate, there's also several layers of very hard coating. This is a Thai ALN coating, and uh, it's much harder than the carbide, and I think just overall makes for a more durable insert. Since we've got a good recipe of insert feed and speed figured out, we can machine the actual ball screw now. To protect the threads while the ball screw is held in the chuck, we made an aluminum bushing with a slot in it. 
and uh, ball screws are only case hardened, which means they're extremely hard at the surface, but much softer towards the middle of the material, sort of a nougat center sort of situation. So we're taking a 35 thou depth of cut here, which is larger than the nose radius of the insert, and it's also gonna cut deeper than the case depth. So we'll get right to that middle, uh, softer metal in one pass. I was really worried about turning this part and put it off for quite a while, but in the end, it ended up not being an issue. We tackled this like we do for most engineering problems. We identified the key risks, proposed a few possible solutions, and used a simple experiment to quickly test and select the best option. I put a link to the exact insert we used in the description. This ball screw is for a project we're really excited about, but we're not quite ready to share yet, so be sure to subscribe so you don't miss it. Thanks for watching.